Good evening and welcome. Tonight we will be exploring the history and geography of Alajuela in Costa Rica. Alajuela is this huge area up here, the very north of Costa Rica, bordering Nicaragua. Now this area is very, very well known for its beautiful landscape. If you hear stories about people coming to Costa Rica for ecotourism to see all the beautiful natural wonders, volcanoes, national parks, they're coming here to Alajuela. Absolutely beautiful area. The largest volcano in Costa Rica, Arenal, is right here. Unfortunately, the spine of the book goes right through Alajuela, which is really unfortunate. If I could go like this, you know, that still doesn't help. But Arenal is right here by the, the, the center of the book. There's also Boas Volcano over here. So, yeah. And then there's many, many more. It's a very, very seismically active little corner of the world. Lots of hot springs and things like that. It's also very mount mountainous. You can see the Cordillera de Guanacaste coming through here. And even more mountains over here. The, the whole place is pretty much just a bunch of mountains. I'll show you all on Google Earth. The main area where most people live is down here. You can see the city of Alajuela right here and as you can see it's very close to the capital city San Jose. It's pretty much a suburb of the capital city like it's not officially but they just flow into each other pretty much so very very busy area there. Um, I feel like everything else I'm going to show you on Google Earth, it is so, so gorgeous. Um, but you know, I do want to show you one thing first, because the National Park of Guanacaste is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Now most of it, you can see Guanacaste is right there. Most of it is over here, but a little bit comes up into here. So technically, Alajuela has a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So let me show you UNESCO's website, so you can read about the Area de Conservación Guanacaste. This is the area, oh sorry, the Area de Conservación Guanacaste, described in 1999, was extended with the addition of a 15,000 hectare private property, St. Elena. It contains important natural habitats for the conservation of biological diversity, including the best dry forest habitats from Central America to Northern Mexico, and key habitats for endangered or rare plant and animal species. The site demonstrates significant ecological processes in both its terrestrial and marine coastal environments. We're not going to talk about the marine coastal because that's in Guanacaste. We're looking at Alajuela today. But if you're like me, you're going, what is a dry forest? And is it the opposite of a rainforest? Let me look at the pictures real quick so you can kind of see a good indication of what this area looks like. Dry forest. Right? Dry forest. than the rainforest areas. So yeah, pretty much, let me move this out the way. The mountains that you see here get all of the rain coming off of the Pacific Ocean here. And none of the rain kind of makes it to the other end. So even though it is, it has everything a rainforest has except the rain. Isn't that interesting? It's a dry forest. Very different biodiversity, too, because not as much moisture and wet in those forests. I thought that was so cool. But 
let's go over history and then we're just gonna play on Google Earth. When I tell you, I literally have spent like an hour looking at Alajuela on Google Earth. It is so beautiful and I keep finding cool little spots. You know what I found? If you know me, you know I love water parks. I always show you guys the water parks that I find. I love water slides, I love swimming, so on and so forth. Um, just north of Arenal, there's a water park where they use the water from the hot springs nearby. So it's a water park, but the water's all warm. Oh my gosh. It's like a new bucket list water park for me. I've got Kuwait, I've got Bahrain, now I have Costa Rica. <laughs> I gotta go. I can't wait to show you guys, but we'll see if we look at that. But history. This area was very thickly populated with native tribes before European contact. Um, there are lots of ancestral people there today. There is even a tribe in the north I was reading about that resisted European um, like domination until I want to say it was like the 1800s just because they were up in the forest, you know. There are stories about Garabito, who ruled the area down here. He was the chief when the Spanish came. So the Spanish made lots of notes about him, but didn't write a lot about him. You know, they were like, the guy in charge here is named Garabito, period, full stop. <laughs> so there are lots of interesting things about him, but not a lot of details about just kind of like he was here. And then of course the Spanish came and did their Spanish thing and took over the area. In this southern region here, the area was controlled by Encomiendas. And Encomienda was a way for the Spanish to use the native peoples for their personal gain, but with like a fresh coat of paint slapped on it to make them look good. The encomiendas were pretty much like plantations at the end of the day. They were places where the native people were put to work farming, harvesting whatever they were growing, but the whole thing was that they were like, oh, if you live here, of course they were like, come to the encomienda. You'll have these beautiful homes and bedrooms, and we'll feed you, we'll take you, we'll dress you in Spanish clothes, we'll teach you Spanish, and most importantly, you have to attend our church services, and you're going to be Catholic, and you're going to be baptized, and you just follow all of our, our Catholic agendas, pretty much. It was meant to be like on surface level, it's like, oh, this is a place where we teach Catholicism and Christianity. But when you peel back the layers, it was a place where these people were forced to work. Sure, they had lodgings. Sure, they were fed. Sure, they were clothed. Sure, they had church services. But in exchange for that, they put in hard labor that they obviously weren't paid for, you know, because they were given all of these things. So that was the encomienda system. It was glamorous slavery, pretty much. Still a very terrible institution, right? But the Spanish were just trying to make it look nice when it really wasn't. It was not. There were also various reservations established where I guess they might have taken a page from the Americans no, I don't think the Americans were doing this at the time, but they would soon. Where they were like, well, we're going to use your land for our farming, but we have this land over here that's all yours. You can do whatever you want with it. And the people there are like, we don't want that land. There's nothing there. And they're like, but it's all yours. So the Spanish conquistadors, the Spanish enslavers were obviously not good people at the end of the day, but their culture, their language, their religion, and their ways of life 
seeped into the mindset of the peoples here, which gives us our Costa Rican culture today. The city of Alajuela was founded on October 12th, 1782, which is very late in history, as you can imagine. You know, lots of the cities in Costa Rica and Central America were established in the 1500s and 1600s. This was 1782, or almost in the 1800s. And that's because, you know, this area was just for encomiendas, and the Spanish just hadn't really made their way that deep into the, the forest here. That was about the time that they started to establish that area. In 1823, civil war broke out in Costa Rica and the rest of Central America. It spread over all of these Spanish areas here uh, for independence from Spain. Some pockets of Costa Rica were pro-Spain, some were pro-independence, and the region of Alajuela was very pro-independence. So they wound up getting their way. Um, they would wind up, sorry, 1823, I'm, <laughs> I'm too far ahead in history, I read the wrong date, 1823, they were independent from Spain by 1823, it was like the 1810s where the Spanish were falling apart and they lost control of their colonies here, in 1823, now let me tell you what happened in 1823, Mexico, our friend up north there, was like, oh, we're going to make the United States of Central America. And many people were not too pleased with the system that was implemented. And then civil war breaks out between people who wanted to be part of Mexico's plan and people who wanted an independent Costa Rica. I read their home date. I'm so sorry. Lots of conflicts happening back to back in history. But as you can tell, the United States of Central America did not work, and these areas all became independent, including Costa Rica, which included Alajuela. Now, another conflict happens, and I didn't write down the year for that, so I'm not going to read the wrong one. This guy in the United States, named William Walker, had an idea one day. He thought, these people down here in Central America are sitting on a lot of profit. There's lots of industry here. At the time it was sugarcane, would eventually morph into coffee. Um, but there is lots of really good agricultural land here. And he thought, these people don't know what they're doing. But I do, because I'm an American. <laughs> so he had the guts. He first came to Nicaragua and said, I'm taking over. And... Um, he wound up actually being very successful in Nicaragua, and so he started to make his way south into Costa Rica. The Costa Ricans were ready to fight. It was known as the Filibuster War, because back in the day, the word does not mean that now. A filibuster was a person who came into a different country to try to take over because they know better. That was a filibuster. That is not the term for it nowadays. So, the forces of William Walker were coming into Alajuela, and um, at one point, there were soldiers lined up, Costa Rican soldiers, outside of one of William Walker's forts, and they said, you know, we gotta run in there, burn it down, and then we can lead our big attack. But they knew that if they, if someone ran in there, they were going to get shot. So no one wanted to do the big task of running with like the torch to toss it at the fort and light it on fire. Except one young man named Juan Santa Maria. He said, I will do it, but you have to look after my mother. You have to promise me you'll look after my mother. And he took that torch and he ran to the fort and he was shot and he was killed, but he managed to set the fort on fire. He managed to throw the torch in time to light the building on fire, 
they charged, attacked, and the Costa Ricans won the battle. And slowly but surely, William Walker had to withdraw from not just Costa Rica, but Central America. And to this day, Juan Santa Maria is the national hero of Costa Rica. It is the pride of Alajuela, but that's where he was from. Um, and yeah, he is just probably the most beloved historical figure in Costa Rica today. Not much else happens historically, except that Arenal blew its top in 1968. Apparently it had not erupted in like hundreds of years, so the people here did not even know that it was a full-blown volcano. They just thought that it was a big old mountain until there were earthquakes, tremors, smoke coming out from the top, and then it went kaboom huge explosion wiped out whole villages many people lost their lives today i believe correct me if i'm wrong but this is what i read somewhere but i don't remember where i read it so i might have dreamed it but i'm pretty sure i'm right i'm pretty sure i did read it that arenal is one of those volcanoes that is just kind of always going off like mount etna over in italy it's just always either smoking or lava dripping down it just kind of is always exploding. Not like boom, 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 but letting off its steam. You know, it's a very, very, very active volcano. But other than that, that is it for the history of Alajuela. Let's explore on Google Earth. I'm so excited. This is one of the most beautiful places I've explored. And not just that, but it has so many like photos on Google Earth. I've gone to so many places on here that are just stunning, but there's not enough pictures to show you guys. But this has, like, too many pictures. I'm gonna have to, like, edit myself. Let's take a look at this slideshow. We can see some beautiful Spanish churches here. There's Juan Santa Maria. He's got his torch. And he's running off to what he knows is his death. It says his name down there right there but we just can't see it the hero of Costa Rica it's lovely lovely little churches here so many isn't there oh that's beautiful wow look at that wow that's incredible oh my gosh Jesus looks like a superhero there oh dear what have I done uh oh it froze I froze the tablet Go sharks. Okay, <laughs> you didn't see that. <laughs> but anyway, here you can see that, you know, Alajuela just kind of flows into the capital of San Jose. It is pretty much like if you live in Alajuela State, you live right here. You can see other little pockets here. Um, let's see if we can take a look at any of the farmland I mean, you can kind of tell that's a whole town there, but yep, little patchwork farms there in the countryside. Again, Costa Rica's biggest crop is definitely coffee nowadays. Let's go look at the big guy. Alright, sorry, there's people talking, I think, upstairs for me very loudly. I don't know if you can hear it. It's very distracting. I hope it's not picking up. But here is our Arenal Volcano. Oh, you know, before I look at the slideshow, let me show you in 3D just how big this guy is. You can pretty much see it from anywhere down in the cities there, dominating the horizon. It is a big, big old volcano. Now let's look at the slideshow. You can see. It's very beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, there's just always that cone in the background. Some of the forest around the national park here. Because, as you can imagine, there are many, many national parks in Alajuela. Do you see it? Right there. Um, and they're all incredibly preserved. Oop, it's smoky there. Watch your step. 
Well, incredibly preserved. This is pretty much, from what I can tell, like the ecotourism capital of the world. RNL 1968 there, painted onto the rock. Um, ecotourism being you, oh, that's fun. <laughs> A, a place where you go to be a tourist, but you do um, ecologically conscious activities that don't harm the ecosystem and landscape, and you appreciate nature in its purest form. Let's look at the national park here. It's so beautiful. I imagine it's very hot here as well and humid, but Oh, I bet. Look at that waterfall. It seems so lovely. And I imagine this place is just full of birds singing and bugs buzzing around. And anteaters walking around. Isn't that adorable? <laughs> Little trail map there. But yeah. It's probably an amazing place to explore. There's the hot springs right here. Oh, this is the park I was telling you about. Where the, the water from the water park is the hot springs water. That's like a dream come true. Lots of really cool waterfalls around. Isn't that gorgeous over there? Oh, man. Imagine the hike to that. That must be a whole experience in it. But this isn't the only volcano and volcanic national park. Wait, can we look at Sloth's territory real quick? Oh my gosh, Sloth is so happy. Oh. oh, this is the sweetest slideshow. Oh, sweet little bird. Yeah, the bird life. Oh, there's a toucan. The bird life in Costa Rica is out of this world. It's one of the bird watching capitals of the world. Look at the little sloth. Get to hike on a trail and look at sloth. Welcome to sloth's territory. There's the volcano in the background. Ooh, look at the camouflage on this friend. That's really neat. I thought that was just leaves for a second. Yeah, there they are, ready to take some wildlife photos. But anyway, wait, chocolate door. I think I remember looking at this, yeah. Um, where they grow the chocolate, you can go pick, that was a pineapple, you could go pick the cocoa pods off the trees here and sample pure, pure chocolate. I imagine it's very bitter without all the sugar. But we have, I don't want to lose the volcano, Puas is over here. Another big guy, and he's very active as well. course, incredible scenery and landscape. You can hike right up to the crater here, see the crater lakes. Just don't get too close. Instructions what to do in case of volcanic activity. If you feel bad, go back. If you can't breathe, go back. Don't stay a long time and follow the recommendations. Just leave. <laughs> Just get out of there. If this isn't a fun time for this family, leave. But that looks really cool. Vulcan Poas. What an amazing hike that must be. Wear hard hats just in case, you know. Very, very active. Beautiful plants here. So much to see. Oh, look at this guy's overwhelmed by the view. So, so beautiful. Let's see. And of course, look at all um, like the places you can explore, campsites, the butterfly garden. I read that there are some butterflies that are you can only find in Alagoas, not just Costa Rica, but there's butterflies you can only find in Alagoas. Beautiful blue morpho there. I don't think I could do that. <laughs> I think this would make me feel really uncomfortable if they're on my face. <laughs> I love a good butterfly here and there, but oh, they're so sweet. Um, but don't get on my face, please. I don't think I would be able to handle the crawling sensation. <laughs> but yes, that must be Mariposario. Incredible. Just to have 
little friends crawling on you. You like you can become butterflies. <laughs> this seems that there's just so many places like this all throughout Costa Rica and Alagoas. There's that waterfall. There's so much to show you, but what's that? tourist attraction here. It looks like a little farm. Oh, that's incredible. You can see, you can live on their little farmland. Very, very neat. But yeah, this is the place to go for eco tourism. There's another volcano. There's more volcanoes over here. There's another beautiful waterfall. Wait, Okay, that's beautiful. Let's, yes, it is very beautiful. That's actually really stunning. I want to see what this is. Land of senses and magical rainforest. Oh my gosh. This is paradise. Oh, it's so beautiful. This is what I love is I can just like get into these forests and look around. And there's just so many beautiful photographs. Oh, just being in the water. Oh, how nice. Must be one of the ecotourism lodges. There's another sweet sloth. It's all the signs telling you where the nearest major cities are. You're you're in the middle of nowhere, pretty much. <laughs> oh, had a beautiful view. Little frog. That is a frog, right? I think so. Or a little snake. I can't tell. But yeah. Or just mountains. That is stunning, isn't it? There's more volcanoes there. And, yeah. I think that's all that I'm going to show you. I'm trying to remember if there's anything else I had to show you. What's Los Robles? Oh my goodness. It's a beautiful lake. Oh, how fun. You can go canoeing. Oh. Costa Rica just seems like the most incredible place. Like, how is this real? <laughs> how is this on planet Earth? It is just so beautiful. So yeah, if you're ever one of those people who wants to explore the beauties of Costa Rica, let's see the children's eternal forest while I wrap this up. The place you go is Alajuela private land trust and preserve in Costa Rica. So it's really for the children so that they can always, always have an eternal rainforest here. And this is a rainforest, not a dry forest. See the volcano back there? It's always in the distance. But yeah, I've spent way too long on Google Earth looking at the beautiful forests here in Alabama. I highly encourage you to do the same. I got lost in this place. Look at the lodges here. Oh, and you know the food must be so good there. All super rich and organic. Let's see. We need a big tree to grow on. Who are we? Wow. That's very profound, isn't it? That's a nice thought to leave you with. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that you found it relaxing and educational. And if you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we will be going to Finland. A very different landscape from this, so be sure to subscribe so you won't miss out. I hope that you have a very, very good, good, good,